Yu-Gi-Oh! Forbidden Memories is a childhood favourite game of mine. However, in my youth I was never able to beat the damn thing. And if you know this game, you already understand why. This game is brutal in its later half, to the point where it's oftentimes downright unfair. And so, when I finally returned to it years later to claim my revenge, I was pleasantly surprised to see that many others still share my love for the game, with very active speedrunning and modding communities that are still keeping the game alive 25 years after its initial release. If you're curious about speedruns of the game and its history, I'd highly recommend checking out the Rix's video on it, or check out my live streams where I occasionally like to attempt the run myself. Because in this video we're instead going to be diving into the weird and wonderful world of Yu-Gi-Oh! Forbidden Memories modding, where the boundaries of what this game is capable of are only limited by the creativity of its cult following. In my search for mods to try out, I came across this site, which I'll link in the description for those interested. It appears to be an archive compiling most of the available mods for the game, including the original game with an option for card drops multiplied by 15. The only thing I notice is not on this list is the Scrambler, which can be used to randomise decks and drops amongst other things, so I've included a link to that in the description as well. There are a ton of mods to try on this list, some good, some bad, some silly, and some that completely overhaul the game and how it's played. It would take far too long to finish and give an in-depth analysis on each one, so instead I decided I would play up to the end of the Egypt prologue segment of each one where possible, give my initial thoughts and impressions on them, then if I'm curious to see more of any of them, I'll likely do a livestream exploring each one more in depth and try to beat them. So without further ado, let's just jump into it. The first mod to explore is Yu-Gi-Oh! The Last Memories, a relatively newer mod that's become quite popular in the community, and it's easy to see why from the title screen alone. When a mod reworks the logo and even the menus and it looks this clean, that just screams quality and polish to me. It's evident a lot of love and attention to detail went into this one. This was also a good mod to begin with, as when you first start a new game, it teaches you the weirdly specific method that prevents mods from crashing. Now obviously when you've messed with game files as much as these mods have, a few crashes or glitches are to be expected. The most common crash you'll get has the error message, unknown opcode, or something to that effect, as soon as you start a duel. For some reason though, saving your game at the card shop immediately after starting the game, then exiting the emulator, and restarting then loading your save file, fixes this crash entirely, and I cannot figure out why. But hey, if it's dumb yet it works, it ain't dumb. If your game is still crashing despite this, make sure your BIOS is the most up to date being SCPH7502, and also uncheck HLE BIOS in the settings. This is what worked for me at least, and I haven't had any crashes since. Anyways, back to last memories. Simon looks slightly different than normal, which fits closer to his appearance in the anime and manga, and he'll force you into a duel with no option of running away. You'll notice all the cards have been replaced with more modern ones, but what's really cool is there seems to be different colours for different rarities of cards. And also some cards are effect cards, which are absent in the original game and adds a new layer of depth to the duels. There's also a new monster type with Psychic being introduced along with subtypes as well. And there are a lot of new or changed spells and traps, some of which now relate to even the levels of the card. The new designs for the cards are cool as well, with border colours to indicate different types, and the attack and defence values are shown more prominently. All in all, there's been a huge rework in all aspects of the game. It still feels like Forbidden Memories, but at the same time feels like a whole new game. Heading into our first duel, you'll notice that the life points are set to 10,000 instead of 8, which I thought was odd, however it'll make more sense soon enough. Because it's all new cards, you do need to fumble with fusions for a while to learn what is compatible with each other. But it's exciting, it's like playing the game for the first time again. Luckily there seems to be a lot of fusions you can make, and a lot of compatibility between cards, so it's not too difficult to accidentally stumble into a really strong card while tossing, and then immediately throw it away like a dumbass. The problem is that AI already knows the fusions, and will not make the same mistake, nor do they plan on going easy on you. That may have been the tutorial battle, but I think all I learned was that this mod is amazing, and I'm going to get my ass kicked. So on my second attempt I managed to beat Simon in an intense duel that left me with only 150 life points remaining, and so I decided to explore the world a little. If they'd changed Simon and his sequencing of his encounter, I wondered what else had been messed with. So I visited the shrine where normally one of Haishin's cronies prevents you from entering, but instead I was allowed in. And I didn't realise the mistake I'd made until it was too late. 
They say curiosity killed the cat, but in this case the cat girl killed the curious. If you want to know what the end game of this mod looks like, I assume it'll look something like this. As if opening with Zephrath at 5450 attack wasn't bad enough, on her second turn she adds two more equips, one of which raised its attack by 3225 to bring it up to a total of 9175 attack points. Then plays a second Zephrath on her next turn and due to its effect, brings the original one she played up to 9999 attack power. This is where I realised the 10,000 life points was an act of mercy to prevent you from getting one shot. The rest of the sequencing seems to be the same though. I fought Tear at the duel grounds, and if there's one thing these mods consistently do well, it's giving everybody a much more on-brand deck for their character, with Tear using a lot of fairies. Of course though, I got my ass handed to me as expected. I tried to find out if there were any strong combos I was missing by playing Duel Master K, who is called Copycat in this version and all I learned was that there's a new free duel theme and it goes insanely hard. After finally beating Taya after a few attempts, it was nice to see that the nameless villagers had been replaced by more interesting characters, with the first one being Fizdis, who you may recognise as one of the prince's servants in the original game, and also she's my wife, I love her. Although, she's called Panya in this for some reason. I tried for a while to beat her, but this mod is just too brutal and unforgiving. Yet, it doesn't feel unfair, it just feels like you need to grind for a while and learn a couple of stronger fusions. But I haven't got time for that, there's still many more mods to explore, but I'll definitely be returning to this later. Second on the list is Out of Darkness. This is the most downloaded mod from this site, so I have high hopes. But following Last Memories will certainly be a challenge. Aside from a fancy custom title screen and some UI recolors, everything else seemed pretty normal. Even the starting deck isn't too different from what you'd expect with the exception of a few new cards mixed in with the classics. No beat sticks or effect monsters to help carry us this time. I do like the changes to spell and trap card text though, utilising symbols, making it very clear what cards are compatible with them. But it was when I decided to try challenging Simon that it quickly became apparent something was not quite right. As per usual, I fumbled around with the new cards, hoping for a fusion, to no success. To which Simon responds with a hard drop of Gaia the Fierce Knight. Leading with a 2300 seems a little unfair for the first duel, doesn't it, old man? I then noticed I had two fire types and a winged beast. Now, in the original game, at these low attack values, mixing a fire and winged beast would make marvellous, then the extra fire would turn it into Crimson Sunbird at 2300 attack, which would be perfect to match his freak for the time being. Except this is not what happened. Instead, the Firewing Beast immediately made Crimson Sunbird, which then turned into Blaze Phoenix, a 2800 that gains 500 attack when placed onto the field. So I managed to stumble ass backwards into a boss monster, which was nice. Also, it made me discover that it seems that effect monsters are present in this mod, just locked behind fusions and rare cards. With this, I was able to quickly dispose of Simon's life points and win, although this did feel like a fluke as I was not able to find many other fusions at all the following turns, let alone fuse anything even close to that strong. I thought I'd pay Taya a visit at the duel grounds and whoa, you're not Taya. This is Mana, and I have to say, it's nice to see these mods utilising different characters from the manga and anime. It certainly makes it feel more authentic than just ancient Egyptian versions of Joey and Taya, along with some random NPC villagers. Anyways, yeah, she beat my ass. I couldn't make Blaze Phoenix or anything remotely close to it, and so on her second turn she summons this, Guardian Etos, 2500 attack, not too threatening right? I should have a couple turns to pull the cards I need for Blaze Phoenix again or something else, and I'll be okay right? Wrong, this fucker can attack three times, meaning I was left with 500 life points by my third turn, and she didn't even fuse for this, it was just a hard drop, and obviously I wasn't able to make anything strong enough and I just lose the next turn. Maybe I just got unlucky, I thought, so I tried a couple more times, and every time she pulls out this card, turn 2. On one attempt, I did manage to make a legendary Dark Magician girl at 3000 attack, but even that didn't prove enough when she sacked one of her own monsters to get rid of it, and then I wasn't able to make anything else strong enough to stop her. This mod is super unforgiving. It's the Dark Souls of Yu-Gi-Oh, one might say. There's no opportunity to learn the fusions, because if you haven't made a giant boss monster by turn 2 or 3, you just lose, even on these prologue enemies. This is made worse by the fact that fusion compatibility feels harder to find compared to last memories, and there's no Duel Master K or Copycat to learn from either. 
Overall, this mod is still really good, but certainly feels less balanced compared to Last Memories. I'd still love to revisit this one at some point, but I feel like first I would need a fusion guide to even grind with this one. Next up is Forbidden Memories 2 Ghost. This mod has the balls to call itself the game's sequel, so I'm certainly intrigued. Good game for you! Well, thank you. I have to say, it's not exactly lying, though this mod feels kind of like a Forbidden Memories version 2.0 rather than a sequel. Some of the characters have been switched out for others, however everything else is pretty much the same, with their dialogue and the sequencing of events. But the starting deck features various new cards, with many of them being effect cards. And there are many new fusions that aren't too difficult to come by, but most of the ones you'll find early on are mid-tier. It seems this was intentional though, as it appears some classic fusions have been removed, including Crimson Sunbird, Flame Cerberus, and even Twin-Headed Thunder Dragon could not seem to fuse by the usual means forcing you to experiment more to find the 2000 plus attack monsters, or use the new effects to help you boost your card's power. I think the main thing that separates this mod from the others so far is the difficulty scaling. It feels much more in line with the original game, with Simon playing only very basic cards, giving me plenty of time to discover a simple fusion which I could then use to overpower him. And these simple fusions of around 1600 to 2100 attack points can easily carry you through the prologue, but the enemies will sometimes throw a curveball at you, like Mahad, who replaces Villager 1, did here with a 2500 Warlock, and the second attempt he summoned Big Shield Gardener, which I wasn't able to overpower or remove. These forced me to get creative and try new fusions, and on the third attempt he didn't play anything threatening at all, but I had discovered a few new fusions, including Occubeam and Rose Witch, which I was able to use primarily for the rest of the prologue duels no problem. And then of course, Bakura who replaces Haishin in this mod, kicks your ass with overpowered cards for the scripted loss. I didn't explore much further than this, but I assume it gets much harder and unfair similarly to the original game as well. But it was nice to be able to actually finish the prologue without needing to grind at all. Also it seems they replaced the tournament arc with Duelist Kingdom, which I love, and it's hilarious because the arc of the anime features most of the characters you see in this chapter of the game, meaning they'd hardly have to change any characters or dialogue here. Except for Ashizu, but she already jump scared me as one of the villagers, so I assume she's been switched out for Bonds or Joey maybe. Our next mod is simply titled King Mod? I'm not sure what to expect out of this one, but hey, it has its own opening sequence movie, so that's cool. I'm also starting to notice a trend of mods having a blue theme with their titles and UI changes. So the game's sequencing is as per usual, except Simon has been replaced by Solomon. I suppose according to this mod, Yugi's grandpa is an immortal who never ages. The starting deck is actually pretty standard. No new cards here it seems, except for Seven completed the equip spell, that I don't believe is in the original game at least. You'll also notice they changed the starting deck formula, so you aren't guaranteed a removal spell, which I'm sure won't be a problem later at all. The one change this mod makes I do really like is giving the Guardian Stars colours. Not sure why, but this really helps my brain remember the alignments better. As we head into the first duel, you'll notice they've opted for 9,000 as the starting life points. 8,000 is standard and 10,000 made sense, but 9,000 just makes me uncomfortable for some reason. Because the cards are all the same as the original game, you'll be fusing a lot of the usual suspects. Crimson Sunbird, Mystical Sand, Flame Cerberus, Twin Headed, etc. But now you'll find these fusions have effects, which are mainly designed to boost their own attack and others of the same type. So it plays very similar to the normal game, except everything has now been power crept, which includes the enemy duelists, as Simon pulls out Ushioni turn 1. And even though he wasn't too much trouble to beat, this would be a problem that kept getting worse the further you get in the game. It has the same trouble that Out of Darkness had, where if you get unlucky and aren't able to fuse anything good by turn 1 or 2, then you just quickly get overwhelmed, which is asking a lot of you at the start of the game when your deck is random with no consistency. Which is exactly what happened in my first duel against Taya. I didn't draw well, so her Mystical Sand quickly beat me down. Despite this, I was still able to beat Taya on my second attempt, but the real problem began with Sharda, who replaces Villager 1. The duel begins with Yami Field Buff already in play, which of course greatly benefits him and not us. Like, how can I be expected to beat an Air Eater equipped with Acts of Despair without any removal spells? The one time I was able to beat him was because I was lucky enough to survive putting Mountain out, and then was able to fuse Crimson Sunbird the following turn, only to be met with Mana, and while it's lovely to see her again, I did not appreciate her three gold fine mammoths whose effects all increase the other's attack after already starting on Wasteland terrain. Honestly, I think it wouldn't be so bad normally, 
If you're good enough at the original game, you know how to make the best fusions that would be capable of countering what the enemy are playing. However, early game deck inconsistency and the fact they get their preferred field buff out of the gate just makes this feel really unfair. I do think it's funny that even the game over screen has been altered. Actually, I think I figured out what this mod feels like. It's like this mod is the equivalent to when I first discovered Minecraft's game files and just started changing all of the textures and whatever other files I could find. Anyways, I think we've seen enough of the King mod for now. Let's move on to... Extreme Battle? Why have I got a bad feeling about this? Wait, Vietnam Team. They were the ones who did Out of Darkness mod. There's not really much to say about this one. The starting deck is pretty standard, but again we've been cooked out of any removal spells and instead been given sparks, which is the equivalent to a spit in the face. And the gameplay is probably what you expect out of a mod called Extreme Battle. Enemies will always play 2000 attack beat sticks, so I hope you get lucky enough to make a decent fusion to fight back with, in exactly the same way as we did in the King mod. And it's not so bad as long as you know your fusions and um... Oh okay, that's a 4100 attack of Dark Sage in the first duel. No, that's cool. I guess the enemy just have the option of playing something unbeatable at any point they feel like it. So after beating Simon on my second attempt and heading to the duel grounds, things became very suspicious. I didn't have too much trouble disposing of Taya, however I realised why this mod was feeling so familiar as soon as I started the Villager 1 battle, which began with Yami Field Buff, which is the same as the Shada duel in that King mod and he played similar cards as Sharda did as well. It feels as though the King mod has just taken this mod and changed the textures and slightly altered a couple of effects, because they both have the similar enemy decks, fusion abilities, and even the same BS difficulty scaling. I think we can call it here on this one. Let's move on to something completely different. The Wake of Gods? Whoa, that font is an assault on the eyes. This one has a lot of new cards to play with and the card redesign is pretty cool but I did get scared for a second that those red and blue symbols meant we would be pendulum summoning. I do like when mods add lots of new cards, it's fun to see what kind of new things we'll be able to fuse with them. Oh, that's a turn 1 Cosmo Queen. Swiftly followed up by a Dark Sage and a Magician of Black Chaos. Gee, thanks Simon. I know Forbidden Memories mods typically have balancing and difficulty scaling issues, but this is on another level. And if you're curious whether all the duels are like this, yep, it doesn't get any better. I tried a few times on both Simon and Taya, with no success. I don't know how you're expected to even grind for better cards when the first duels of the game are impossible. Let's just move on, I don't think we're going to see much more of this game. Yu-Gi-Oh! Reborn If you can get past the very overwhelming UI, this mod is pretty decent. While most of the cards are the classics, there are a few new ones for you to find primarily through fusions. One example being a fusion that would typically make Machine Dragon instead now make Cyber Dragon, which is pretty cool. This mod is also one of the ones that has effect cards that are reserved mostly for fusions. The difficulty is pretty low though, maybe I've just been conditioned by all these insanely hard mods, but this one was a breeze all the way through the prologue, showering you in extra star chips as you go. Said I did suddenly jump the difficulty up right at the end by playing cards like Gaia, but fusions like Twin Headed Thunder Dragon giving themselves a 500 attack buff means he was light work as well though. I do wonder if this was the basis or inspiration for Forbidden Memories 2 Ghost mod as this has the same dialogue changes that mod did, and a similarly low difficulty. Regardless, after that last mod, this was nice and chill to play through though, but nothing special. FM of my dreams. This mod feels very vanilla, but in a good way. There are a few very simple UI changes here, not anything too drastic, and it's still kept pretty clean and easy on the eyes. Plus, the title screen is in Portuguese, which is cool to see because I've heard this game has a big following in Brazil and it's almost a shame to see the rest of the game hasn't been translated to go along with it for those fans. Regardless, this game doesn't really change much, just makes the decks of enemy duelists and the cards they drop much more themed around their characters, which can occasionally jump the difficulty a bit, like Taya having a few high defense fairy monsters, and Seto more commonly using cards like Battle Ox and Gaia. But generally the difficulty is well balanced and the prologue wasn't any trouble to beat. There's not really much else to say about this one, I just like when Duelist's decks make sense and they give you cards they actually use. Alpha Mod. This is another one of those mods that tries to change every file they could get their hands on. Hell, even the text font wasn't safe this time. I kinda dig it though, not gonna lie, it's a nice font. We got new backgrounds, different characters back in their anime accurate forms. Oh god, Simon, are you okay? I didn't realise I was playing Doki Doki Duelist's Club. Anyways, the deck builder UI is a little bright for my liking, but it's certainly not the worst I've seen. 
This mod adds a lot of new cards, but there are still some of the classics in there. And with those new cards comes lots of new fusions, with plenty of compatibility that makes sense the majority of the time. Except for Sis Hunter not letting me use them for Twin-Headed Thunder Dragon, which was kind of rude, but okay. This mod has a nice, very balanced difficulty. It wasn't overly easy, but also not insanely hard. It was a nice challenge. And although I did struggle with the villagers, it's not like they were massively overpowering me. I think I probably just missed a good fusion with the right Guardian Star that I needed to win. Overall, this is a good mod. I had fun with this one. Plus, bonus points for the truly intimidating game over screen. Forbidden Memories 2 Ultimate. This is the same title screen as Forbidden Memories 2 Ghost, but now with the word Ultimate slapped onto it. So I'm going to assume they're related. And from the title, it sounds like this is the final complete version. But the Ghost version we played earlier actually feels like the more updated one. Because while many elements are exactly the same, like the character swaps, cards and fusions, the main thing I noticed was that this version of the mod is missing card effects. And perhaps I was just getting unlucky, but the duels seemed much more difficult this time around. With even Simon and Taya playing many more 2000 plus attack creatures than the other version. Honestly, this mod isn't too bad in of itself, but I'd recommend the Ghost version of the mod over this one. Unless you think Ghost is too easy and want more of a challenge. Anime Fusion. Alright, we're getting into some of the real weird ones now, I'm excited. So in this mod, there are no outwardly changes. All the UI, characters, and dialogue are all kept default. However, the one thing that is different is now all of the cards are random characters from a range of different anime. I mostly had One Piece and Dragon Ball, but it looked like Naruto was in there as well at least. And some of the artwork is taking me out. Why is Boa Hancock just the man standing emoji? If you're curious about how fusion compatibility works between a bunch of characters from different anime, you'll be glad to know there is none. Like, literally. I played for an hour and got through the whole prologue and didn't see a single fusion from myself or the enemy. Even between characters from the same show, I could not find any that would mix, so I'm inclined to think there just isn't any. Which means this mod plays in a very strange way, where your whole strategy is to find a rare strong card and pump it full of equip spells to make it a giant boss creature. Whoever has the bigger beat stick wins, which was fun for a little bit, but quickly lost its charm. I'm kind of curious to see if the game continues in this way through to the end, or whether anything changes. But for now, let's move along. Nova Conquesta 3, which apparently means new achievement in Portuguese. No idea what that's supposed to mean. But the title screen image is of Zeus from Dota 2, so I'm very curious. Unfortunately, I was sorely disappointed to find that the new cards were in no way related to mythology, or even Dota 2. There are quite a few cool new cards in this mod, however. Some we've seen before, and also a few we haven't seen yet. But the weirdest part is that there are cards here I don't think actually exist, like Cloud Witch and HG the Terrible, which certainly makes this mod unique. Finding fusions can sometimes be a challenge, but the few fusions you do stumble across are usually pretty strong, with some of them housing some nice effects to make them even more powerful. Although they don't always say what the effect is. Despite these strong fusions, I'd describe the difficulty of this mod as weird, because it seems like turn one the enemy will always play something pretty strong, ranging from 2,000 to 3,000 attacks, sometimes even more. And this goes for even Simon and Taya, so you're forced to search for a decent fusion from the first duel. But what's odd is that if you can beat this big first creature, then the following creatures they'll play will be significantly weaker. But don't kill it and they'll continue to play pretty big creatures to follow up with. I'm not sure, maybe it's just a coincidence from the short time I played. Regardless, I managed to beat Simon thanks to all faithful twin-headed Thunder Dragon but then I was struggling to get through the villagers as I wasn't able to consistently pull out a strong card turn 1. I sort of gave up after a few attempts when Villager 1, the third duel of the game, pulled out a 3100 attack giant on his first turn, which he then turned into HG the Terrible at 3650 attack, and equipped it the following turn making it 4300 attack. And with no removal, I had no way to beat that thing. So I gave Nova Conquest a 4 a try instead, and in case you were wondering, yep, it's pretty much the same thing. Except it seems there's a few other new cards, and a few card effects have been removed. So if you want to try this mod out for yourself, I'd recommend the 4.0 version, because it did feel slightly more balanced, even though it is significantly less downloaded on this site, and looks like it might be made by someone else entirely. The Wicked 2.0 I sure hope they mean wicked as in cool and not wicked as in evil. Immediate points for the Draw Monster Cardo reference on the title screen. That's silly, I love that. There's a few UI changes in this one that gives it a much darker tone, which maybe it's just my latent emo side coming out, but I kind of dig it. 
It even has the cool alternate font that Alpha Mod had. Not much has changed in the overworld except for the villagers being actual Egypt era characters like Karim and Mana again. And some character portraits for when they're talking off screen are also different, which is a new one. But the cards are very different, with the majority of them being new ones, including many we haven't seen in other mods, I think. As always, this means there are a ton of new fusions to go along with it. And luckily, they didn't seem hard to find, and the difficulty is nicely balanced. That is, until you reach Joey and Seto. Before this segment, the duels have all been challenging but fair. However, once you duel Joey, sometimes he will just pull out insanely strong monsters you aren't ready for yet. But this is rare and random so normally it'd be fine. Except Seto straight after does the same thing, but it's almost guaranteed. I understand the game getting harder and needing to grind a little, but it's so insanely sudden it's like Whiplash. This is another mod that gives you a ton of extra star chips, so maybe these mods are expecting you to buy cards often? Oh well, maybe I'll return at a later time and try grinding a little, but when you're having fun and suddenly hit a brick wall, it kind of kills your enjoyment of it. So we'll try something different for now. Mythologic Memories 2, and what a great custom intro sequence, POV you're getting mind crushed. This mod has probably been the most consistent with reskinning the characters because Simon along with Taya and all the villagers are now all appropriate ancient Egypt characters from the anime and manga. Other than that though, I don't really understand what makes it mythologic, because all the cards in this mod are actually pretty new, to the point where the card template has link arrows on them and I would be insanely impressed if they managed to mod that in. As is often the case, there are a ton of new fusions to go along with all these new cards, most of which don't have effects, but the couple that do, you'll know them by their blue link monster card border. And fusions are very easy to stumble into, to the point where I started to feel like I couldn't fail a fusion, and it was more of a question of, will what I fuse be strong enough? The difficulty was a nice challenge when the enemy weren't randomly pulling out crazy strong boss monsters out of nowhere, I'm starting to think poor difficulty scaling is just a common theme amongst mods for this game. However, I do want to revisit this one potentially, because victory didn't feel too far out of reach, and I do like the look of a lot of the cards added in this one. But there are still a ton of other mods to check out, so I'm not going to stick around too much. Reborn Legendary 2 I wondered if this might be related to the other Reborn mod in some way, then I took one look at the UI and yep, definitely related. Now this mod decides to make things more challenging by not even giving you a deck to play with. And honestly, I should have seen that as a red flag and a sign to just move on to the next mod. But instead, I did a little research and apparently you need to buy the starter deck yourself from the password menu, as the first 50 or so passwords are free. Who oh boy, we're gonna be here for a while. So after spending approximately 15 minutes just inputting passwords and another 5 building the deck, it's finally time to start the actual game. Was it worth all the effort? Nope! Simon plays a 3000 attack monster on his first turn, and despite all the cool new cards you get with this mod, it's so hard to find fusions between them, and the occasional one you do manage to find typically isn't strong enough. Aside from how obviously annoying it is to have the first duel of the game be insanely difficult, what makes it worse is the fact that the creators chose to give you this deck to start with, meaning you can't write it off as just an unlucky starting deck giving us a lack of fusion compatibility in the starter deck was a conscious choice. What's worse is I thought maybe there was just a couple strong fusions in the deck I wasn't seeing. So I went to duel Duelmaster K and instead of a mirror match I could learn from, they've changed him to be an impossible boss enemy instead. So I just gave up in the end. It's a shame, but don't even bother with this one, it's not worth the effort. Full power. Oh god, with a name like this I'm expecting another haha big number go burr type mod. And I was exactly right. Everything is pretty much the same, even your starting deck is very basic looking, although my generic removal spell has been swapped out for a type removal instead, which I'm sure is totally fine. On my first turn against Simon I summoned Twin Headed Thunder Dragon, and it seems many fusions here have effects the same as in a few other mods. But this time the effects are stacked, with Twin Headed getting both an attack boost and two attacks a turn. Surely that's the strongest opening I could have possibly played with the deck I was given. Yet, it's still not enough when Simon pulls out Amulet Dragon and immediately beats over it. Fun. Taya wasn't much better, playing Mystical Sand turn 1 which buffs itself up to 2600 attack. Then, because I couldn't fuse anything strong enough turn 2, she made another one buffing the original up to 3100, making it nigh unreachable unless I pulled Twin Headed the following turn. And with only 2 dragons and 2 thunders in the entire deck, the odds were pretty slim, so yeah, I quickly lost to her as well. It's just not fun when you are required to pull out your best fusion turn 1, and if you can't you lose. And even when you do sometimes you just lose anyway. 
I get the feeling we'll be seeing a few other mods like this as we get towards the bottom of the list. Mod GX. I've been looking forward to this one. GX is the era I grew up with, so I'm hoping they do it justice. And as expected, a lot of the new cards in the deck are GX era cards, like Elemental Heroes, Neo Spatians, and even my precious Ruby Carbuncle is here. Strangely though, there are also a few 5Ds era cards, which I wasn't expecting, but I'm not complaining. And I hate to say it, but despite all of the cool fusions you can do with these cards, like making Stardust Dragon or Ojama King, it's another poorly balanced unfair mod. In the first duel against Simon, who is supposedly Velian Crowler in this, I was met with a Phoenix Gearfreed and a Buster Blader, which I could not find a fusion strong enough to beat. So I decided to see if Taya was any better, and apparently she's been replaced by Lime and Banner, and just as impossible to beat. Why the hell are we dueling Crowler and Banner as our first two duels? One has a PhD in dueling, and the other is some evil-ass alchemist who kidnaps people. Surely we should be dueling somebody like Cyrus or Alexis with a much lower difficulty level. I so badly wanted this to be good, and maybe I'll give it another shot later down the line, see if I can find more stronger fusions. It is strange though that the difficulty is so high, when it was clearly using Forbidden Memories 2 Ghost Mod as a basis, seeing as a lot of the UI and texture changes are the same, but that mod was significantly better balanced. Oh well, let's just move on for now. Hard VN. This mod is probably exactly what you'd expect from its name. It's the base game, but the enemy don't mess around. Meaning you need to be pulling out the best fusions the base game has to offer from the first duel if you want to win. Which is generally okay, because you're probably only looking for mods if you're already very familiar with the base game. So it sort of feels like a new game plus in that sense. And I don't know if I just got lucky, but the starting deck was very optimised, with a nice array of different types you can use for all sorts of fusions. Including a few dragons and thunders for twin headed, and a few winged beasts and pyros for Sunbird. Ironically making this mod actually more balanced than many of the other mods we've been exploring. Unfortunately it does mean that by the end of the villagers gauntlet, they are already pulling out twin headed thunder dragons. Meaning they probably want you to grind and streamline the deck pretty quickly. But this is helped by the fact the drops are multiplied by 15, and they are well themed towards who you get them from. Overall, this mod is fine if you love the base game and want a challenge, but don't mind needing to grind a lot. Naruto mod. I've actually played this mod in the past through to the end, and forewarning, it's amazing. Maybe I'm a little biased as I grew up watching the show and I'm still a huge fan of the series, but aside from all the cards, backgrounds and characters being replaced by Naruto themed ones, this mod actually does a lot of other things really well. For one, it's the first mod I've seen that's fully translated, which is cool for any Spanish Naruto fans out there. It's also one of the most well balanced mods I've played, with the starting duels being very forgiving while you learn how the mod works because it is very unique in how it handles fusions. As the way it works is characters can fuse with other characters of the same age and if they're in a team together. For example, Season 1 Naruto, aka Genin Naruto, can fuse with either Genin Sakura or Genin Sasuke, as they're all in Kakashi's team. Then this fusion of the two you just combined can then be fused with the last to form the full team, which can then be further combined with the team leader to complete the team. There are a few other fusions you can find, along with various equips that work on certain characters based on their fighting style or what village they're from. It's really clever and makes perfect logical sense if you're a fan of the show. And if you're not, you probably aren't playing the mod anyways. The difficulty scaling is also really well done, as you can get through the prologue and tournament arc with relative ease without needing to grind. The game does get much more difficult around the shrine mages and you likely need to grind around this time, but this is the same case as the base game anyway, so it's fine. At least you have a variety of enemies to grind by this point. Drops also make a lot of sense, with characters like Konohamaru giving you cards of himself and his friends primarily. I think the thing I love most about this mod as a fan of the series is that it follows the plot of the actual show, with the prologue being the Land of Waves arc with Zabuza, the tournament arc being the Chunin exams and Sasuke retrieval arc, and the jump back to Egypt after is written in as the three year time skip to Shippuden. It fits so well it's genius! I think the only thing I'd say would be nice to see is if it got an update that cleaned up some of the textures. In particular, the character portraits could be chroma keyed out better. Hey, this mod won my heart so much, maybe I'll make it a passion project to make a cleaned up English version, if only for myself. Mod 722. I actually don't know what this mod does exactly. Everything looks normal, but I think supposedly every card in the game now has a chance of dropping. And I think that means the cards that were previously unobtainable by normal means in the base game have been added to the drop pools of various duelists. Either way, there's not much to say on this mod, it's just a redefined version of the base game for completionists. 
Duel of the Gods. This mod is very strange. Aside from the menu that hurts my eyes, I actually really like this mod, it's super unique. So all of the backgrounds, locations and characters are no longer Ancient Egypt. They've all been changed to the Door Monsters era, like Simon is now Solomon Moto, the Shrine is now the School, the Plaza is now Kyberland, etc. They even changed Taya's look and included Rebecca, which is a character I haven't seen in other mods yet. And when you get to the card shop, it's Sadie from Yu-Gi-Oh! GX, which makes me very happy. And that's all really cool and unique, but what's really odd is that everyone talks in some gibberish made-up language. I have no idea why. Maybe they should have called this mod Language of the Gods. But aesthetics aside, this mod has a nice variety of new cards. Many we've seen already included in other mods, along with a bunch of new fusions as well as always. They aren't always super easy to find, but the mod has a well-balanced and forgiving learning curve, with the first few duels at least not completely overwhelming you, giving you time to experiment with the cards you have, but also not letting you get away with fumbling for the whole duel. It's challenging, but fair. I'll likely revisit this one at some point, because it was pretty fun and I'm curious how they've modified other locations and characters. Apocalypse Beta So it appears this mod uses the Alpha mod as a basis, there may be some different cards added, I'm not too sure because I didn't play a lot of the alpha mod yet. But generally they look and feel the same with this mod also having a lot of the same cards and options for fusions. But where this mod is different is that it makes the enemy insanely hard to beat. But it doesn't just give the enemy insanely powerful cards. Instead, they just seem to be able to create insane level fusions every single turn. To the point where you have to question if they're using the endgame AI from the base game, in which they're allowed 20 cards in the hand at any time. Because 3 or 4 card fusion chains every single turn is just ridiculous. If this is still the beta, maybe they're working to smooth things out a little bit, but as of right now, without being able to streamline your own deck to match theirs, it's nigh impossible to win a duel. Unless you know the strongest fusions already and get insanely lucky. Yugi Z. I have no idea what's going on, but this is awesome. Not only have I never seen Dragon Ball before, but the mod is also in Spanish it seems. But I can recognise a lot of love and effort went into this mod. Not only does it have its own opening, the UI, backgrounds, characters, cards, and even the playing field are all custom, and look really well made and fit the Dragon Ball theme really well. Only problem is I have no idea what I'm doing. I have no clue who fuses with who, so I struggled pretty badly. But even still, I managed to beat the first duel, so it seems like the balancing is also well done. Then again, I also don't mind losing when the game over screen is a literal meme. Overall, as I'm not a fan of Dragon Ball, I can't really say much about this. But it looks great, so I imagine as a fan of the series you'll probably love this. And this mod will probably be to you what the narrator mod is for me. Mods 11 and 13. These two are both very similar to the 722 mod from earlier, in that they're essentially the same as the base game, but each altering the drop pulls and rates for various duelists slightly, and including all cards in the game. Meaning you'll get different cards as rewards than you might normally expect. With mod 13 supposedly being more forgiving than 11 and giving you better cards more easily, so it's generally preferred. Where these two mods are different from the 722 mod is that they also adjust enemy decks to be slightly more themed and difficult. Even though it's not next on the list, I'll cover mod 15 now as well, as these three mods tend to be often confused with each other. Mod 15 is similar in many ways to mods 722, 11 and 13 in that it adjusts enemy decks, difficulty and drops in its own way but it also includes some new fusions and a modified starter deck as well, which makes getting tech victories much easier to obtain in the early game. Overall, if you're looking for a simply enhanced edition of the base game, these mods are where you should start. Mod Hiyoswa Nothing has really changed aesthetics wise here, other than the card faces have a clean new look, and the deck now features a couple of new cards mixed in amongst the usual starter deck cards. But most of the original game's fusions have either been changed or removed, which is fine, it just means you need to experiment a little to discover the new ones, and some of them are pretty cool. But the problem is that once again, the enemy are insanely difficult from the get-go, and it feels like no fusion you're able to find even stands a chance against them. So yeah, this is another mod that looks pretty interesting, but it's ruined by terrible difficulty balancing and scaling. Dark Duel Why does this image of Yami Yugi go kinda hard though? Despite Forbidden Memories technically being a successor to the Game Boy game Dark Duel Stories, this mod is not actually in any way inspired by it. Instead, this mod does not really change much, except gives all the cards the purple fusion card style border instead, and also gives the enemy duelists insanely powerful cards for no reason. Seriously though, how many people are out there saying their favourite part of the original game is how unfair it is, to the point half the mods we've played are nigh impossible to win a single duel on? 
Anyways, something unique this mod does is that while it does give some fusions effects, they're sometimes weirdly specific. Like gaining 750 attack points for each Togex in the deck. Which is hilarious if you know that it actually only drops from Dark Knight and a couple high mages in the normal game at least. Meaning you'd have to beat 90% of the game before this sees any benefit. Assuming the drops have not changed of course. Regardless, I gave up pretty quickly trying to beat the infinite Dark Magicians that come out of both Simon and Taya. Digimon mod. I love that the custom title screen is just the Digimon logo pasted over the original. Now, I know Digimon a little better than I know Dragon Ball, but still not enough that I would understand what should fuse with what. But that's why this mod is so awesome, because it tells you on the cards exactly what their compatibility is, which is super helpful. Especially when fusions work very differently in these anime mods, because in this mod, apparently the way to fuse stronger monsters is actually through various equips like Digivices and Digi Eggs, which causes the Digimon to evolve from adorable to freaking badass. It's unique and pretty fun, not super challenging, although it does get a lot harder at Joey and Seto. So I assume the game wants you to grind the villagers for cards or star chips to get more of the equipped cards especially, because you only start with one Digivice and one Digi Egg spell initially. It's a shame this mod doesn't overhaul the graphics and story in the same way Dragon Ball and Naruto's mods did, but regardless, it's still a great way to put a completely new spin on this game. And I bet if you're a big fan of Digimon, this must be especially cool. I mean, come on, these things are just so damn cute, and it's just all in all a chill, fun time, I don't know what else to say. CDZ mod, aka the Saint Seiya mod. I'd never heard of this anime before, which I guess makes sense after I googled what it was, and it was apparently airing 10 years before I was even born. But a shonen anime about zodiac signs as warriors sounds freaking awesome. So let's see if this fan-made mod can convince me to watch the actual show. It appears all the dialogue is the same, but the characters have been replaced by characters from the show. And I don't know who this Simon stand-in is, but they do this really scary trick of disappearing, then reappearing in front of the text box. So as you'd expect, all of the cards have been replaced by Saint Seiya characters. And it's always a good sign when the starter deck gives you a 3100 attack monster. So similar to the Dragon Ball mod, this one does appear to have fusions, but not many, and I don't really know the logic behind them. It seems more so that your strategy will be to find your big beat stick cards and pump them with equips. Unfortunately, you don't start with many of either of those, and the enemy play cards 90% of your deck can't beat. So the duels basically boil down to digging until you find that one good card that can win you the game, then immediately being faced with another opponent even your best card isn't good enough for. Well, it's a cool sounding anime, but it doesn't seem to have translated well into Forbidden Memories, although it did make me curious about the source material, because why the hell does the game over screen have so much blood that I don't think I can show it on YouTube? What is happening in this anime to cause someone to explode blood like that? Anyways, unless you're a huge Saint Seiya fan, you can probably give this one a miss. Mod perfect. Well, the title screen is certainly minimalist. It seems this mod is along the same vein as mods 11 and 13, and that it is very akin to the vanilla game. But I believe every card is available and drop rates are modified. I'm not too sure if there are any other real differences, except it also uses colour coding for card rarity, and the starting deck has been adjusted similarly to mod 15 where you get a couple more spells and traps, making tech victories a little easier early on. But yeah, pretty much just another simple mod for those who just want a slightly different experience of the original game. Light Mod Beta I tried for a while but couldn't get this mod to run for me, and the Facebook group for it no longer exists or is privated, so I think this one is dead. Dragon Ball Z This one is a lot simpler than the previous Dragon Ball themed mod. There's no fancy UI or graphics, even the characters are default but the backgrounds have been changed along with all the cards as you'd expect. And of course, not being a fan of the show means I had no idea who should be fusing with who, but from what I was able to tell, it seems you evolve characters into higher forms by combining two different versions of the same character. But even when I did this, it didn't really help much as the fusion was no stronger than many of my other basic cards. But at least it was a different Guardian Star, which is where my biggest issue with this mod comes in. Because the attack values of the cards are so low, the 500 attack Guardian Star bonus is huge at least in the early game, but the majority of your cards are the same type, being Mars. Meaning if your opponent has a Neptune card like here, it's really difficult to beat over it. Also the duels are just really slow. I assume the power scaling is crazy as you get later into the game from what I know of the show. But the first duels are painful, chipping away 100 life points a turn. Of course, I can't really say much because there's probably some really good fusions I'm just not aware of. So I'll just say, if you're a fan of Dragon Ball, I'd recommend the Yugi Z mod over this one, as it just seems like a better mod overall. But definitely give this one a try if you're looking for an alternative. Pokemon mod. So on this site, there are two downloads for this mod with the same name. 
These are both actually the same mod, except one is the more recent version. But I'd recommend downloading both. This is because the earlier version of the mod comes with a Word document explaining how the new type matchups work. As the classic type matchup chart from the Pokemon games can't be translated into the Pinamemory Memory star sign system. So, some types have been grouped together and assigned a star sign, but there's also an added blank star sign for normal types, and with it comes an interaction that the game doesn't warn you about with its gold or red highlight like usual. The module actually want to play as the version titled Pokemon 2.2, which is actually currently the less downloaded version. As not only does it include nicer artwork, it's also much more balanced in difficulty than the original. It's still really hard though, requiring a lot of luck and probably a lot of grinding. This is because, like with all anime based mods, the gameplay has been overhauled so it plays totally different. In the Pokemon mod, in order to make stronger cards you need to evolve your Pokemon, which you can do by fusing cards of the same evolution line, like Pidgey and another Pidgey to make Pidgeotto. Then adding another Pidgey onto that will make it into a Pidgeot. These can be hard to fuse as you can only have three copies of the same card in your deck. So with three stage 1 cards and three stage 2 cards, that means at maximum 6 out of 40 cards will be of the same evolution line, and compatible with each other for fusion. So you need to get a bit lucky with what cards you draw if you want to make the best monsters. But these monsters are usually pretty strong, with some like Pidgeot harbouring effects as well. You can also evolve certain Pokemon with evolution stones like in the games, and in this mod they're in the form of equips. There is also the option of non-evolving Pokemon as well, which are often big beat stick cards on their own, and the starter deck will be gracious enough to give you one to help you in the early game. Speaking of the starter deck, it seems to be very nicely balanced with it giving you a lot of the same cards, so you'll be able to complete the evolution chains of the cards you start with, even if they aren't the strongest. You'll also get one starter Pokemon, like here I got Squirtle. Not much you can do with it at this stage, but you could grind the first couple of duels for a while to get more with star chips and you'll also get a field spell, one removal card, and one random evolution stone. The duels themselves are very challenging, but not impossible, and you'll be relying a lot on getting the right type matchups for the attack bonus, or finding TM cards that are the equip spells in this mod, and which moves work on which Pokemon is helpfully written on the cards. It's also cool that the duelists you face all have themed Pokemon to a certain character, like Simon has a lot of starter Pokemon, because he's meant to be Professor Oak. And Taya is supposed to be Misty, so uses a lot of water type Pokemon. All in all, this mod is just awesome. I love these anime mods that have super unique twists on the original game. And if you love Pokemon like I do, it's definitely worth checking out. Mod H. This is just another one of those insanely hard for no reason mods. Everything is normal, even your starting deck is as per usual, except the fact all the cards are in Portuguese. There are some new cards added in this mod, However, they're all giant boss monsters exclusively for enemy duelists to bully you with. There's not much to say really, even with the best fusions in the base game, you can't beat these things, so don't bother. Oh, and all the passwords have a price of 999,999 star chips. In case there was any doubt this mod wasn't designed to be unbeatable. Yammy Duel Monsters. I love the logo, very nice. So the only thing that's really changed in the overworld is some character swaps and Mana here has some very silly looking lip flaps. The main changes are to the starting deck and the duels. There is a balance here of new and old cards, and the starter deck does seem to have the chance of giving you some cards from the original game, normally not in the starter pools, which is pretty cool. Many of these new cards added are ones we've seen in other mods, and a few of the fusions are similar as well. But there are some different ones as well, so it takes a little bit of experimenting to find what works well. You also get polymerization in the starting deck, and I have no idea how to use that in this context but Rituals were always pretty useless in the original game, so maybe this makes them more viable. Now, what makes this mod unique compared to others is the fact it seems every duel starts with the Yami Field Buff in play, which I guess explains the title, and this can either help or hinder you depending on what cards you have. Also essentially making the Yami spell card I got in my starting deck pretty much redundant. And seeing the field start on Yami made me assume we were in for another really hard for no reason star mod, but I was pleasantly surprised to see that actually it's pretty well balanced. You'll need to discover fusions to survive, but the game gives you plenty of time to do it. Some will be strong enough, others won't, so there's a nice level of difficulty here. Overall, the mod is pretty good, nothing too fancy, but it has a unique idea and runs with it, and it gets a lot of credit for not being insanely difficult right out of the gate like I would have expected. Rebellion mod. This mod changes a lot, beginning with literally everything being in Spanish now. Also, all the character portraits and backgrounds have been swapped and don't look half bad. Especially Taya, she is looking great. But I do have to question, how is Ancient Egypt Simon Moran here, but then also Solomon Moto and modern day Taya? 
When exactly is this mod supposed to take place? Maybe I would have more context if I could read Spanish, but it's not that important. If you can get past the pain of looking at the deck construction screen, you'll notice there are a number of new cards here, including some unique ones I don't think we've seen yet in other mods. The card borders and type symbols have all been changed, and I can't figure out if I like them or not. Maybe I'm just so used to the default ones that these look strange to me. So the duels begin with different field buffs depending on who you're facing, and of course these typically help your opponent's cards, which makes things harder than they already are. Because you need to hope you can find a fusion that's stronger than theirs, or remove their field buff and then still find a fusion that's 2000 plus attack minimum, which by itself is easier said than done. I don't know, maybe I just got unlucky with my starting deck, but I tried all sorts of combinations of cards, and very rarely could I find any compatibility. The fusions I was able to make were pretty much just fusions from the base game, which of course were not strong enough here. All in all, this mod seems pretty interesting, but I'd have to do some more research and find out if there's something I'm missing like a strong fusion or something. A range mod. I've heard this name mentioned before actually, and it's supposedly quite good. And now I understand why. So things don't look too different from the get-go, however once you get to the deck screen you'll notice a ton of new cards. Not only that, but each card now tells you their password, in case you want to use your star chips to buy more of them. You're also provided with a combination of 10 spell or trap cards, which is by far the most we've seen in any mod, which will be very helpful for tech victories, but also will mean you likely won't need to grind so much in the late game for them. But once you get into a duel, you'll truly see why I love this mod. My favourite thing about the base game was discovering new fusions, and this mod has an insane amount of fusion compatibility. To the point multiple times when I was cycling cards I didn't think would fuse, I accidentally made something new. And the best part is, cards that have been fused tell you in their description what it was that made them fuse. Maybe it's just me, but I love this idea. It really helps me to remember the fusions, but I also assume you can use this to see how to make fusions your enemy have made as well, which is super helpful. The difficulty is not high, at least for the prologue, I would say the difficulty is on par with the original at the moment, but even if the difficulty stayed around the same level as the original the whole way through, it would be fine because the new cards and fusions aren't crazy overpowered and actually balance well with the classic fusions. I love this mod, it's very satisfying and it's everything I personally wanted a Forbidden Memories mod to be without it getting too fancy and completely overhauling the game. Definitely check this one out for an amazing enhanced experience of the original game. I'll for sure be revisiting this later down the line. Toon World 2. This is another mod that doesn't really mess with the world or story and instead focuses on changes to the cards. You'll notice this mod uses the purple fusion card border for every card, which I'm not a huge fan of personally, and there aren't a huge number of new cards but the starter deck has been slightly modified, so you're likely to see a few different cards with higher attack values than you would normally get at the beginning. A big change however is that the starter deck does give you some high level spells and traps, like Swords of Revealing Light and Harpy's Feather Duster, which are both really good cards. All in all, this starter deck looks like it's shaping up to help you out more and lower the difficulty of the game a little bit. In the duels, not much is different, a few of the classic fusions have been changed, like Dark Elf is now Toon Light Magician Girl, which I don't think actually exists, but some like Flame Cerberus still remain. The enemies appear unchanged, so with our more optimal starting deck, the prologue is pretty easy. Overall, it's a decent mod. I guess the inspiration for the name is that maybe a starter deck looks more like a deck Pegasus would use, or just the fact that a few Toon cards are included in this mod, although they appear rare. Either way, it's quite chill. It's nice to see some new cards we hadn't seen before. Me Gay Man mod. Much like every other mod based on an unrelated media, this mod puts a really cool twist on the game and feels really unique. Not much has changed outside of the decks and duels, but the cards as you'd expect are now all different Mega Man characters, and I had no idea there were so many of these guys, damn. This mod plays sort of similar to the Digimon mod, in which you won't really be fusing much in between characters, instead you'll be looking out for equips whether to buff an existing character or evolve them into something new, and helpfully the cards do let you know their compatibility lists. You can also fuse two of the same characters together, but only sometimes, it's very rare and usually not really worth it. A big thing is how insane the power levels are immediately, with most cards housing over 1500 attack or defense, with some like King having 2500 attack as a starter card. And so, typically the duels boil down to a slugfest of who can find the strongest card. And even though that sounds boring, I actually had a lot of fun with this mod. The difficulty is a little challenging right from the get-go, and quickly scales up as you progress through the villagers, with them bringing out quite strong monsters with effects like double attacks. Meaning you may need to grind and farm for a little while, if even just to get more equips to increase your chances of drawing them. 
But yeah, overall it's pretty simple, but I really enjoyed this mod as just a casual Mega Man fan. So I can only imagine this must be really cool if you know all these guys and you get to use all your favourites. Eternal Duelist. This mod is pretty interesting. Not much has changed, but all the cards have the orange card border, which made me think they might have effects, but that doesn't appear to be the case. Also, the enemy duelists are more difficult, with stronger cards than usual, but not unfairly strong. And at the same time, your own starter deck is equally souped up with a few new cards added. Some of which are crazy strong beat stick cards like Ultimate Tyranno at 3000 attack. It's like the game has just been moderately power crept, but you're given a crutch to help you out of trouble or give you a free pass from time to time, which is oddly a lot of fun. I guess it's just nice to be the one with the giant boss creatures on hand for once. I'm not sure if there are any new fusions included along with the new cards in this mod. I think its purpose was just to give you the power fantasy you'd always dreamed of, after being beaten up by overpowered cards in all the other mods. Although randomly once you get to Seto Kaiba he does start playing some blue eyes dragons, but if you're lucky, you'll draw your removal or your own big boss monster. It's a very weird mod, but I kinda like it. Not many mods will give you such huge creatures to play with off the bat. It's a nice change of pace and a breath of fresh air as we come to the final mod on the list. Mod Unknown. And it truly lives up to its name because it's unknown who thought making this was a good idea. And it's unknown who would actually want to play this. It's extremely similar to Mod H, in that everything including your own starter deck are default, but the enemy all have insanely overpowered cards not even Twin Headed could hope to defeat. So yeah, try this mod if you want to, but I can't say it's likely to end well. Although, after trying out 45 of these Forbidden Memories mods, I couldn't think of a better one to end it on, because I think it perfectly sums up the majority of mods for this game. While being RNG hell and super unfair is a large part of why Forbidden Memories is so infamous, so many believe that they need to make their mods just as unfair, and in some cases even worse right from the start of the game. But what makes the original so brilliant is actually the way it lures you into a false sense of security, and gradually gets more and more difficult. Only then does it show its true colours over halfway through the game after you're already invested. It's the Sudden Gate Guardian seemingly out of nowhere that traumatised our childhoods. The small slither of hope knowing victory is never that far out of reach. Believing in the heart of the cards because you know just one lucky draw can turn things around. And that feeling of getting an amazing card drop on those small random chances smaller than 1%. That's why this game is so beloved by many. It's no wonder we're all addicted to gacha games now. Despite this, there are a few truly amazing mods amongst this list that really capture the essence of the original and expand upon it with their own ideas. Or take the base mechanics and twist them in their own unique way. Or maybe combine it with something else they love from their childhood. There are so many ways to enjoy this game now, despite its age. And who knows, maybe this early days collection Konami announced for Nintendo Switch will include a long wished for remaster. And this new game supposedly designed with OG fans in mind will bring us back here in some way. I guess for now we should wrap up this video. It's probably gone on super long already. If you're still here, like, subscribe, all that good stuff YouTube likes you to do so the algorithm is kind to me for one more day. And let me know in the comments if there's any other mods I should try out. I'm sure there are others out there outside of this site's collection I have yet to try. And keep an eye out for my future streams of this game. I'll likely be revisiting some of my favourite mods and trying to beat them. But yeah, thanks for watching. I've legitimately spent around 20 hours in this game in its various forms the past week, so now I'm going to go play literally anything else. Perhaps some Yu-Gi-Oh! Tag Force.